Hello everybody. Uh, I think I'm I'm five minutes late for the session, but there were some technical problems. Any which ways, uh, uh, happy to see you all again, and we are very glad that uh, this live session is picking up very well because we had certain students who have come to us through these live sessions. I'm very glad that uh, they're quite helpful. Uh, I hope my voice is uh, edible, uh, edible or audible. Sorry, what's wrong? I think the weekend fever. Uh, any which way. So I hope my voice is audible and I am quite clear to each one of you. Uh, coming to the main uh, session and the main point today that we want to cover is the undergraduate market, the undergraduate students who are looking out for their, uh, you know, uh, uh, hook where they belong to. So uh, that's what I'm going to uh, explain in this session today. This session is more for the parents because they are the decision makers because the 12 standard students pretty much are very naive and they absolutely would not know uh, what will be the best option for them. So all the parents out there, this is for you to grab attention and have yours on. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I would like to cover uh, uh, undergraduate study why it is uh, good to go and send your kids abroad uh, second thing is we'll also speak on the countries which are viable and which can be good enough to go also the third thing would be the costing so these are few of the aspects which are very very crucial when you're making a decision of whether sending your kid abroad or not uh, first and foremost uh, for by studying abroad now uh, this is something which uh, a lot of parents ask me and i'm i'm wherever whenever i'm in the counseling uh, of a uh, counseling chair of mine it's always been asked that uh, do you think it is the right time to send my kid abroad do you think uh, it is viable or do you think it would be safe or do you think that you know it is needed so all such questions come from the parents and i'm absolutely uh, in sync with why these questions are asked because that's something which is not a normal route uh, we have always heard students going abroad only once they have uh, seek their bachelors they finish their uh, you know engineering or bcom or whatever and then we send the students or the our kids to abroad to study that's also one of the aspects which students or the parents can choose for but right now it is a, a good option to send abroad also firstly for many of the reason first of all the flexibility of the course that you have so flexibility of the course by mean i mean is when you ask your kid these days ki, what do you want to do the only option that we have here are the mainstream courses right after 12th uh, uh, if you have finished your engineering after 12th sorry uh, you have finished your science or commerce or arts typically you have very very limited option you will be if you're science you look for engineering if you're from science you look for the natural sciences courses and stuff if you're from arts you will look for a bms or a bmm or a journalism course if you're from commerce then of course be or BMM and stuff that way but what if my kid wants to learn beyond it I have a kid who wants to study engineering while he also wants to do dance dance he I, I have a son who wants to do chemistry but also wants to learn history are these options available to us I feel no these options are not at all available to us year out and hence we get them very restricted to the narrow stream what you do you push your kids to the mainstream courses and Put the same drill for each one of them but when you send your kid abroad one thing which is very very uh, positive about it that your kid would be exposed to wide array of subjects choose what he or she wants to and build its own curriculum all right so this flexibility of course is something which we don't get out here and that's why studying abroad makes a very very good and a very strong option second thing which you can look out for is that when you go abroad you're not only sending your kid to learn something from the you know people out there but also you're putting your student to a network which is going to be once in a lifetime i mean how much ever you try you will be able to send your kid to good schools i am not here to demean any indian universities or colleges out there i myself have studied here and i cannot demean of course when i went abroad i saw the difference and stuff but yes here also the education is absolutely great but how many of those institutes are good that's what we have to question so but when i'm sending my uh, kid abroad to study one thing which i'm also engaging him is to meet and stay with people across the world so you make your son or your daughter a global citizen which is a need of the hour right now 
because everything is going to be uh, here and there. There's a lot of things which we have to learn from others. There's a lot of things which you have to exchange with others. And hence, you become more uh, competitive in today's market. So in this case, when you're sending your kid abroad, you're asking or you're putting your uh, son or a daughter in a situation where he's sharing the classroom with a Korean, an American, a European, an African. And hence, the most uh, important and interesting part is this. Because you learn so much out from there that it's something which will bring the best out of him you learn different lifestyles you'll bring something uh, you'll bring different uh, culture you'll exchange your son would know where exactly what kind of lifestyle they lead uh, what are the you know uh, different kind of foods and music and blah 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 so basically these are the things which you're putting so you're putting him setting him on a platform which is much much uh, higher uh, than what you can expect to have your son doing it out here so basically, you're pulling him out from one pool and putting him in a wide ocean where you absolutely think that, you know, your kid is going to meet each new thing, each new wave is going to uh, shape him in a different personality. So that's something which is beyond uh, what you can give your kid if you're making him study here. Third thing is you're making him available to international market. So basically, if after his engineering or after his chemistry or after his medicine or after his arts program, you are making him available to international job market. So basically, he's, he can work in the dream companies, dream destination, where you probably wished one day that you'll be able to drive yourself there. And he would be easily accessible to those employers. So something which again brings a lot of weightage on his resume or his CV. Uh, which will be a killing aspect in today's competitive world. And hence, uh, again, uh, this third point makes it really, really strong that a student goes abroad and study for it. So we covered uh, the first part is the flexibility of the course, which I feel is very, very important because these days, whenever I get students, they are very confused. Uh, they don't know or they're not very sure whether, you know, engineering is there for them. If engineering, then which kind of engineering? What if I want to do two uh, fields uh, together? No, it's not possible in India. I don't know because they just restrict you for a lot of reasons. And hence, going abroad will help him to shape his uh, desires and interests and coin or define his own this thing. The second thing is the networking aspect that you give. And the third thing is the international job market. But these are very, very crucial aspects. And the fourth thing, which I feel, again, is very important, is the confidence building. So when you're sending your kid at that stage, the question always arises that will it be safe? Will he be able to cope up? Yeah, to kuch bhi nahi karta, kuch se. Ek, uh, khana bhi banana nahi aata, kuch se bhi nahi khata. And all these things, exactly my point. If you're cribbing that he is not doing or she is not doing anything out here, it's because you are there for them. You are there, maids are there, drivers are there. There's so many people to help them out out there. Why would they do it? I and mean, there's no need. We only do things when there's a need for it, right? So when you're sending your kid abroad, one of the biggest aspects and one of the biggest importance that you're giving out there is the kid knows that he has to strive for himself or herself. That's beyond, uh, you know, uh, 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 it's, it's very clear to him or her. He has to uh, go for his classes. He has to do his assignments. He has to clean his room. He has to make changes. He has to be social with friends. He will do his laundry. He will cook for himself when he's hungry. He will, um, uh, he will meet new people. There's so many aspects which he'll do on his own. Do not pity on him, on them. It's not necessary to pity because it's all very, very joyful out there. So you need not worry, ki, oh, my kid is going to do laundry and stuff that way. It's something which you don't have to worry about because those are life skills and you probably need to give them today because you never know that you will have someone to support you throughout your life or not. So this is something which is very, very important. Confidence building is very crucial. And hence, going abroad will give that aspect and that very important life skills to your kids. So these four aspects, I think, are very, very crucial. And I hope this brings the uh, decision that, you know, that's something which you, why you should send your kid abroad. So, um, uh, so if any of these points have a tick on your head, I think that's the right time to go and go deeper into studying abroad. Okay. Now coming to the next 
next pointer which we had in the next lab which we have is uh, which country now that depends on many aspects but i'll speak about few of the popular study destinations which are good cost effective great education and also safer all right so these are one of few of the aspects which i'll talk so i'll cover one country at a time uh, talking about the most prominent one and the most popular one and that's usa so america yes it's known as land of opportunity and hence a lot of students and parents would want to go to there want to send their kids and students might want to go there so when it comes to america few things which you have to take care they have two intakes every year they have a intake in september and january every year typically a 12 standard student is going to finish his 12 exam during april or so so in this case the first and foremost thing that the student has to do if he wants to go after 12 is appear for two exams and the first being sat that's the sat exam which covers maths and english for every student so that's very very important it's out of 1600 and the student needs to get if he wants to go to a good school 1200 plus is a desirable score the second thing which he needs to affair, uh, appear is for a toefl or an ielts exam so toefl and ielts is an english exam basically it helps uh, to know uh, it's an english exam which covers reading writing listening and speaking of the student and if you are uh, good at it then basically they know that you can comprehend things in english so these are two competitive exam which the student has to appear if he is desiring to go for america second thing is uh, after you go so if he is going for uh, the year when he finishes his 12 the application process for that september starts a year prior so basically let me uh, uh, ask you like suppose if your kid right now is in his 12 standard or entered 12 standard and he is going to finish his 12 standard say by next march or april 2019 his intake is going to be september 2019 for which he needs to appear his sat this year that is 2018 and he has to start his application process that is applying through his essays letter of recommendations and all extra documentation which we help further at education street these documentation has to start prior and we have to make an application to an us university by this november 2018 so you need not wait till your son or daughter finishes his exam and then do it otherwise you'll miss one of the year which is very crucial and you can't do that so it is very very important that you plan your stuff much more earlier so this is a call out for all the students and parents whose kids are in 10th or 11th standard because this is absolutely the right time to start with it so the question arises here so 12th standard score is not important i can say probably yes because your result uh, your uh, uh, judgment of admission is happening on your 9th 10th and 11th standard score apart from it the sat score and the toefl score so this is how the admission process happens in usa so typically your kid will have an offer from much awaited university in usa before you actually even have your 12th result in hand but yes passing 12th is very important and of course if he is a good student he should pass with the caliber that he or she has it uh when it comes to the cost so us has two different kind of universities they have public universities and they have private universities the public universities typically have tuition fees which is lesser as compared to private and it ranges from 10 lakh rupees to 15 lakh rupees and when it comes to private universities per year and private universities the universities may cost around 13 14 lakh rupees to 18 lakh rupees now this cost ranges uh, from university to university and region to region but typically if you are looking into four so the tuition cost fees would be around 45 to 60 lakh rupees per year or oh, sorry for the entire course i'm sorry for the entire course if you are looking out to send your kid abroad the living cost typically is going to be 6 lakh rupees per year but this cost is typically student remove on their own after 6 month or a year of being in us by working part time and hence that can reduce the cost so this is something which you have to take in account that it won't be added it would be in fact not coming to you after a year because students happily work their part time they work under a professor or a library or you know a canteen or any aspects which are available to them so this is very very healthy so that's how the living cost is covered by the student a student being good 
may also offer scholarships. There are ample of scholarships offered. Sometimes we have students who get 30%, 40%, and as high as 40, 50, and 60% as well. So this is also something which you can look out for and uh, which can reduce your cost. If you are not looking for something very high or not more than 40 lakhs, there are options and very good options which can be in your budget for around 30 40 lakhs as well so this is also something which you can iron for usa as i mentioned in, uh, intake is september uh, the the fees is around uh, 10 to 15 lakh rupees a year living cost is around 6 to 7 lakh rupees test required is sct and profile. so these are more crucial points which you need to know at this point of time more detail you can come to our office and we can discuss about it the next study destination, which is very lucrative again, is Germany. Uh, Germany is very crucial. Why? Because there are a lot of courses which are for free. Yes, I use the word free. So this is something which you can iron for. However, when you're sending your kid to Germany, they require 13 years of education. So that's how their framework of education is. So what we do normally if student is interested to go to Germany, typically engineering courses are very viable and natural sciences courses are very viable to go for Germany even business programs. So the 13th year you go to a student college, it's called a student college, wherein they teach you the basic subjects and they also teach you German language. So you do your 13th year and then you go to a free bachelor university. That bachelor university, the course would be either for three years or four years, all right? So the only cost which a parent have to bear here is the first year student college, which is around eight to 12 lakh rupees. And the living cost for each year, that's going to be around 6 to 7 lakh rupees. So typically, if you're going for Germany, your cost can be as low as 20 lakh rupees. And that's why it's one of the most lucrative options because the fees are relatively not there only. Only thing that you have to do is your living cost. German language becomes very crucial here to learn because you're going to Germany, which is a very linguistic country. So they only teach you so no point in, you know, and students of that young age are very, very hands-on to learn this language. So this is something which again becomes a very good option and a viable option to take in further for. Um, uh, so Germany, again, if you're looking for something, uh, you know, not that expensive, then Germany is a great destination to go in. And we have a lot of students now uh, nowadays going in because they've realized that as much as you're going to spend here, you'll get a world-class education if you go to countries outside. The third destination which I'd like to talk about here is Canada. Canada is very, very similar to uh, USA. However, the fees are relatively lesser. So the fees would be around 8 to uh, 12 lakh rupees a year. So the fees is relatively almost 30% less to USA. Living cost is same. It's going to be 6 lakh rupees a year. One benefit from USA added to this costing is that it also offers a permanent residency to students who have studied there. And hence, if you're looking for a student or you're looking for your son or daughter who has a PR or a permanent residency for that country, a long-term benefit and stability for your kid, then yes, Canada is a great destination. They have fantastic universities. You name the courses and they are there out there. So again, Canada can be a very viable option. Uh, parents do have question, is it uh, Canada is very cold with my kid being able to cope up? Uh, trust me, Southern Canada is pretty much uh, possible and most of our students go there. So Southern Canada is not something which you think uh, is going to be very difficult to cope up with. Yes, it is cold, but as it is a developed country, there are a lot of things which are already in place, like infrastructure with heater, your room is heated, your university is heated, the tunnels are heated and stuff that way. And it's very joyful. I mean, it's something that you get to see which is not there in your country. So I'm pretty much confident that students cope up. So that's not something should be a cause of concern. So Canada is a great destination again. Uh, the fourth country which I would eye in is Australia. Again, a great destination, good places, student-friendly places in uh, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Queensland to go and, uh, you know, have a great life there. Uh, they, again, offer great business programs, IT programs. Uh, they are very uh, well-known for engineering as well. So this is, again, a great destination which you can iron for. Tuition costs range from 12 to 16 lakh rupees a year, same like USA. So uh, Australia is uh, in uh, comparison with the costing when it comes to... Uh, with USA. Uh, another added advantage of uh, Australia is that it offers permanent residency. So again, a long time uh, benefit for your kids. 
so if you want them to have citizenship of some other country canada and australia are bang on countries to go in for living cost is 6 lakh rupees and again every penny of it a student removes on their own because uh, basically you uh, australia is very high on part time jobs and they are the highest payers for uh, the part time jobs you get paid almost dollar 18 per hour and that's pretty 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 strong enough to remove not only your tuition fees or uh, sorry your living cost but also if you work during vacations and stuff you can remove your uh, 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 some component of your tuition fees um, again very high on scholarship so if you are looking out to send uh, students abroad scholarships are something which are very very uh, handy and if the student is good of course the grades have to be nice and then you can probably kill it out there so these are four destination which i would like to talk at this stage over here uh, again there are more countries like there is ireland there is uh, uk there is uh, new zealand uh, there is france all of these options are widely available and typically if you think that the cost i don't i need not be like spending so high then the destination which are very very viable is germany canada uh, you can also i am for france you can also i in for uh, our, uh european countries like sweden netherlands typically the cost over there for education is only 5 to 6 lakh rupees a year so pretty much we have options for every range of what you are looking out for so it's not that you need to uh, you need one crore or uh, about and you know you need to then only think of sending your kid abroad there are almost options available for everyone and as i said germany germany is a great destination if you are looking out for only cost which typically a student has to uh, spend on is the first year of student college so much more details can be uh, given and imparted to you if you walk down to our any of our offices that is in mumbai uh, we have three offices bulun bile parle and washi so these are three offices and all my counselors are pretty much uh, strong enough to give you those information so this is a right time if your kid are on vacation this is the time to bring them up and start with it uh, another aspect which i also want to touch upon is that um, uh, i covered the financing and everything of that aspect few uh, faqs with students and parents normally have is it safe enough and is it good enough to send my kid at this stage when he's so young i understand he's a piece of your heart and he, he or she will always be uh, it will uh, be as long as uh, you are alive so i understand that uh, feeling of yours but uh, if you uh, let him or let her uh, be exposed to as much as you can in this young age i think you'll make a, a personality which can thrive any competition or any uh, depression or any situation which is very very important i think we need strong humans right now uh, who are sensitive who are more uh, you know uh, um, what do you say who are more uh, um smart enough who has more character to themselves uh, than anything else so that's exactly which you will be providing your uh, kid if you're sending them abroad so the umbilical cord will always be connected the emotional part will always be connected need be he or she goes anywhere but uh, i think for a better prospect yes this decision is going to be very right and all the countries which i'm mentioning are developed countries so there as there they are in fact more safe for in uh, in an aspect if you are comparing that whether they're safe or not because those countries are pretty much safe crime ratio is very low and stuff uh parents do ask you you know this thing happened there this thing happened there uh for that i would only say that those uh, mishaps which happen or those unfortunate incidents which we read in the media i feel probably there has no control to it i mean you can't keep your kids shielded in one room uh, so that's something which you need not concentrate on concentrate on the positives more uh, uh, if something has to happen it might even happen in front of you so uh, let's not uh, uh, wa- get worried about it because uh, uh, fear will always play its role so let's not uh, rule out or let's not uh, focus on the fear that we have as being a parent um, so that's very very crucial and i 
another question which parents ask is that uh, is an educational loan viable if I want to send because I personally don't have that much savings. Yes, educational loan is completely viable. Uh, banks are ready to give parents uh, educational loan for all four years or three years of their bachelors. They also provide you a loan for the living cost of your kid. So this is also something which can work for you. So not that you need to show uh, 50 lakhs or 60 lakhs in your account. Uh, educational loan is much more supportive and will help you out to send your kid abroad. Uh, third thing is that uh, it's expensive. So how do I reduce the cost? Uh, first thing is uh, help your kid to build your uh, build the grades right now. Help them to have good uh, score in their SAT and TOEFL, whatever they're taking. Scholarships are ample out there. Scholarships are much more available to undergraduate student than uh, the master student. Undergraduate student build on the profile like uh, make them learn new languages, help them to have aggregates, internships, NGOs, uh, whatever they can do to prove them that they are a good profile student. And this together, a good profile pack jumbled up, we will be able to send a good essay and stuff that way and an application. Once the application is done, they consider the entire students about, you know, who's well enough. And if you are up the ladder among the pool of students who have applied that year, then in that case, you will be able to iron scholarship. I'm not saying this just to, uh, you know, uh, uh, act, uh, you know, sound sweet enough there. But yes, there have been 50% uh, uh, people who have got into scholarships and then hence that's very, very helpful. Even if you don't get scholarship the first year and you perform very good in your uh, first year when you're out there and you're in good books of them, you can eye, uh, you know, fellowship from principal or dean and professor and you can get scholarship the next year. So even if I am not doing great now, I probably can earn my uh, scholarship the next year out there. So these are few of the aspects which I think are uh, relatively very, very uh, strong enough. So cost, yes, it is high. I cannot say it is as uh, going to be similar as what you're going to do out here. But with that little push, if you can give an ocean of things to your kid, I think it's worth it. So something which you can uh, gauge upon, uh, just think about it and uh, you can have more questions because this is just a starter from us. So Education Street is right there around the corner. Just pick up your call or email us and we are all there to help you out. You can write to me at ankita, A-N-K-I-T-A at educationstreet.in. You can also visit our website for contact details and address of our offices. That is www.educationstreet.in dot in and we will be more than happy to uh, you know guide you and uh, support you uh, we understand the uh, the the sensitivity of undergraduate students and hence we take care uh, that we find the right fit for you so anything further to it um, we are just around the corner happy weekend have a good time and we would love to see you soon see ya